Thanks for coming back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. This week, though, uh, we're actually at the mothership of AWS uh, in Seattle, and I'm joined by David Chambers, who's part of our batch console team. Hey, David. Hey, Booth. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Um, now, you guys have been doing a whole lot of work on Batch's console, yeah. and a lot of this is really stemming from the fact that customers keep saying to us, we want better job telemetry. Um, so, so let's see, show us what you guys have done, because uh, you've been work hard at work. Absolutely, yeah. One of the things that we really want to hear from our customers is what they want, and they've been saying they want to be able to see into their containers to get insights into uh, what kind of memory and CPUs are being used when they run their jobs. So we have gone to the process of adding in container insights straight into the console so that they don't have to leave and go somewhere else. Right. Um, so let's just take a, a quick moment and talk let's about have a look. that. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing that uh, you have to understand is that Container Insights is uh, a flag that gets turned on and off per container. Uh, okay. You can do it so that all new containers are, are automatically turned on. Mm -hmm. The downside to that is then uh, you are automatically tracking and paying for all the times that you use those. And so you may have you know, 50 different compute environments, but you don't want to necessarily pay for the Container Insights on all 50 of those. Right. Um, so you don't necessarily want to turn all of them on every time. So what we've done is we provided a way so that you can uh, do them either one by one or you can select the ones that you want fairly easily. So let me just give you a, an illustration here. If I go into compute environments and I create a new compute environment, we'll just do this very straightforward here. Uh, I'm just gonna do a test CE and I'm gonna take all the default settings because this is just for demo purposes. We're not actually gonna necessarily do anything with this particular CE. Yep. So I'm just come down here and I'll create this. And uh, we get our banner that says, hey, it's gonna be created. If I go in and I view the details, mm -hmm. down at the very bottom of the details, I now have a section called Container Insights. Ah. You'll notice that it says, "Hey, the the CE is still being created." So we'll right. give that for we'll give that just a moment to to process, um, and then while that processes, I'm going to come over here to our compute environments and let's look at one that's already been processing uh, jobs today. Um, I created one earlier, and if I come down here into the details, you'll see where I have the ability to turn it on or off. Okay. Uh, and that's really important because again, once you turn it on, you start incurring CloudWatch charges, and so you may want to manage your. your so this is done on a per CE basis. It is cool. It is. This, but this case, would be the kind of thing that you'd well, you you might turn this on if you were concerned you had some problems yes. you wanted to dig into and you needed telemetry. Absolutely. You go in and turn on Container Insights, and then turn it off later on when you're done and everything's back into production. Absolutely. That's a great observation. I'm going to show you an example of that here in just a moment. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on Container Insights for this CE. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been running for the last three hours, and so. Now what I get is inside of the CE detail page, mm -hmm. I now get container insights. And so you can see here that we have a, a typical time bar. I'm just gonna choose uh, the last three hours. Yep. You'll notice that it's got like a, a really skinny spot here. And that's because I turned it on and then I turned it off. Right. And now I've turned it back on. Ah, of course, cool. okay, right. makes sense. So, yeah, so in comparison, uh, we'll let this one run, in comparison to the one that I had turned on. So here we go, here we have- Oh, wow. Yeah, here we have all the data that we've been tracking on this particular CE. I've been running jobs nonstop all morning long so that we can show you some data. Yeah. Um, you can see where I've got some gaps in that data. And that's because I turned it off for a period of time right. while it was running. Okay. And I turned the other one on. So you, you can see where that other one had a real short clip and this yep. has a gap in the middle. That's because I kind of flip-flopped which I was tracking. Right. What really is exciting to us about this is that this gives you the basic overview, but then gives you the ability to go out and customize in a really awesome way, because now I can click straight into the metrics in CloudWatch. Okay. And that's gonna pull up now my specific one, and now from here, I have the full power of CloudWatch. I can set alarms, I can do all the different things that I could do in CloudWatch, mm -hmm. uh, in or check the logs for the, the CE, the whole process, wow, and and that all that originates from the batch console. Now, one of the things that we've added to the console to kind of help make this easier, because obviously some customers may have 
10, 12, some have 50 CEs. Yeah. You don't want to have to go into the details for each one. Right. So we've added a new section to our console called console settings. And basically the console settings over on the left hand side will have a section for permissions. Yeah. And then you can see all of your containers and whether or not the container insights option is turned on or not. Ah. So when you click in to edit that, you now Ah, uh, you can do it all at once. Yeah, you can do them all, like enable all of them, disable all of them, or right. you can just toggle two or three or four. Or selectively. That makes a whole lot of sense. It's going to be way faster. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's the really amazing power that that we're trying to put into the, the, the console. It's all about giving you visibility into your, your work. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Okay, and this is and this is like this is just part of a whole lot of enhancements that you guys have made to to the batch console recently, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have also added uh, job logs inside of the console. So if I go to the dashboard, you can see that I've been running uh, jobs. I've got uh, you know some that have intentionally been failed as part of this stress test that I've been running. Uh -huh. uh, I've got jobs that are still uh, runnable, some that are in process of running, and then I've got these jobs that have succeeded. And so I can come down here and I can get that breakout for the queue. If I want to see all of the jobs that are in the process of running, I can click here. And now I have the ability. You have just made like so many people's days <laughs> by doing this. <laughs> now I have the ability to, to filter down at that level, but then we have another level as well. Uh, we've added what we're calling right now is advanced filters. Again, mm -hmm. we heard from our customers. They said that this was a pain point. We wanted to make sure that we went in and addressed those pain points. And so we've added these advanced filters where now they can get in to search for created for created after by job definition name because you know sometimes you have multiple jobs running yeah. under a particular family absolutely uh, by the job name itself to create before um, and today's date is the sixth and let's put in created before nine o'clock because I think I started some jobs before nine so let's search. that's right you were here early I saw you I was so here we have here we have the and I'm Filling up my small screen here, I apologize for that. Yep. So, but here you can see I've got just the jobs that were created before, just before nine o'clock. Yeah, before nine o'clock. See, look at that, folks. He was in here at <laughs> seven a.m. cooking jobs for this demo. That's right. That's, that's right. That's dedication. That's what we like. <laughs> that's how we do it on the console team. It's all about dedication. We tear that much about our customers. Yeah. So one of the things that we can now do um, is let's go back here. We have a dynamic search and feature option. There's a caveat though, and uh, the old console uh, presentation that we did um, gave you a limited number and all you could search for was job ID. Yep. Okay. Well, depending on the size of jobs that you have, and there's gonna be a breaking point. I have right now about 12,000 jobs running. Mm -hmm. If I click on the searching and filtering to enable, this is a dynamic search and, fil uh, search and filter option. Right. Okay, you'll see I got a little progress bar there that pops up, uh -huh. and then it's gonna go through, and it's gonna load all of my jobs. So again, the caveat here and is that it's going to load all of your jobs. So if you have into some like in memory database, exactly. Or something. Okay. Uh, if you have hundreds of thousands of jobs, this is not the option you want yet. Yep. We are working on ways to improve our API to feed us that information more effectively, so that we can give you the full blown meal deal on searching and filtering. Right. But let me give you a taste here. Okay. So in this particular case, I have my my queue, and I'm just going to type in. I'm just going to type in 42. So now it, I can pick a specific ah. job or I can simply hit the enter key and now all now, of these jobs here. And this is going to keep dynamically updating. Exactly. So there could be jobs coming and going every other second in there if yep. they're matching that rule. That's exactly right. Okay, that's and, going to be pretty busy, obviously. In this particular case, I'm searching just the running. But if I wanted to open that up, you know, and now you can see I went from having just a single page of jobs to now I've got. Oh. Uh, a growing okay. number of jobs. I, in fact, a uh, really rapidly growing number of jobs, 2,000 matches already. So, okay, I get it. That's That makes a lot yeah. of sense. So then we can come into the next level of improvement that we've added on jobs, and that's the uh, job logs. So again, in the job detail, uh, we want to come down here to the very bottom, and we've added job logs. So I've intentionally turned it off to start because I think right. it's important. So I'm going to click on retrieve logs. Okay. 
And then this is the uh, uh, obligatory warning that says this is going to cost money. We don't want you to be surprised by your bill at the end of the month, right. so we make it very clear up front. And so by acknowledging, okay, you're saying I recognize this is going to cost. Yeah. The good news is that there's only a cost when you access the logs versus container insights where there's a cost all the time. Anytime that container is running, there's a cost because it's tracking those. Right. The only time you pay for logs is when you actually view the logs. Okay. okay? So I'm gonna authorize that. And then now um, it's saying after it's entered running state. So in this particular case, uh, I grabbed the wrong job. So let's go back and get a job that has finished. So job logs start once they've entered the running stage, and mm -hmm. then from that point forward, the logs start to populate. Okay. So let's go here, pick the job queue, and let's actually, I, my personal preference is to go to the dashboard when I wanna filter something big like that. So I have succeeded, let's just take succeeded jobs. Yep. And then let's take the first job in the list. And then let's go down here to bottom. And now I have the logs. Whoa. Right there in the console. I don't okay. have I don't have to go out to CloudWatch. I don't have to search for the, you know, for anything. I don't have to click on another link. It's all available to me right there. The nice thing is that while the job is running, these logs are also updating. Right. So you can continue to work in batch, maybe open this in another tab, still it's batch, and you watching a job that is running right now. Exactly. And and looking at its behavior. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. Can can you show us one where? Can you show? Let's 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 go find a uh, let's go find a job that failed. Okay. Uh, uh, because that's going to be the that's going to be a realistic scenario, right? People are going yeah, to want to dig into that to see what, why it failed. Yeah. And in okay. this particular in this particular setup that I have right now, mm -hmm. um, we have some force fails, um, but they're really basic logs. But you'll see you'll see exactly what we're talking about here. Right. Well, this is a stress test yeah. uh, package that you're running, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's turn off the searching and filtering. Let's go, let's let's go through and do a none here. Turn off the advanced filters. We're just going to search here by oh, failed. Look, that's really yep. easy. Again, yep. so another option to get in there. And, and so now here's all our failed jobs. Click, click on that. Off. Scroll down to the bottom. Right. And there it is. The, it failed. Right. If you open up that. Um, no, the on the left hand side. Oh, here, yes. Yeah, the widget there. Yeah, it'll give you more specific information. Gives you a bit more detail exactly. about why. Exactly failed. right. So you can get your when it started and you know when what was the what's the actual log that it's sitting in. Uh, yeah. The, the stream and, you know, itself. And I mean, if this was like a customer's application, this might be stuff from Stedera. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Explaining what the what the issue was or. Yeah, maybe it's Splunk because they've set up their log configurations or something like that, absolutely. Right, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Let me show you one more cool feature here. Uh, we're gonna need to go back to a uh, job that succeeded mm -hmm. uh, because you have the ability to search the logs from our console. And so let's go here, we'll choose succeeded this time. We'll take, let's go down and get a form submitter job. Okay. And now we come down here. Okay, so one of the things that I know that's happening is that we are taking strides, uh, uh, that this is running in strides of uh, X number of bytes. Right. So I'm going to filter my logs by the word stride. And I'm just okay. going to click filter now. So now I get nothing but the strides. The strides because it's, right. it's a keyword based search and it's dynamic. So um, you open up again, you have the contents of, of that. And it's doing that pretty quickly too. It is, so, absolutely. Yep, okay, that makes sense. Absolutely. And then you can go up and you can limit your results. You can sort ascending, descending, you know, kind of a thing. And then I can reset all the fields and filter and then I get the whole thing again. This is a whole lot better than doing a grep through a gigantic. Thing. Oh yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, did I did I forget my closing quote on the yeah, grep? Yeah, that's or, right. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's our goal. Our goal is to listen to our customers and make the improvements that make their work life, you know, stuff happen better and more productively and more efficiently and, and get the results faster so that they can solve the world's problems faster. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. Well, that, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, then what we're gonna ask is if you're out there watching this uh, on YouTube, if you've got other things that you would really like to see the Batch Console team, uh, come come find us on Twitter and DM as uh, our DMs are open and we'll, we'll get that feedback back to the Batch folks. Um, is there anything else we wanna to cover today? 
No, I think that, I, oh, I guess actually there is one more thing that I think is a good thing. Um, and that is on our job lists, in fact, in all of our lists. So um, as our customer, most of our customers know that we have these lists and you've got the different columns. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have the ability to customize the tables and those customizations will persist from session to session. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so we could actually change the columns in this table exactly. here. Exactly. Let's just say I didn't care about anything but name. So I'm going to turn off all of those things here. Yep. And now I have just name. If I click refresh, you know, on my on my browser, then I still get just name. So it's I persistent. Exactly, it's persisted, and that's part of this console settings process that we've introduced. You have on the left under console settings each of the different categories. You have the ability now to go in. You can see where I've turned off all of those names. Right. Right. I can change how many resources. I can wrap the lines. I can do that from here, or I can do it from the table settings. So if this becomes your tool to, to do all of the kung fu you need to actually dive in, and exactly. you're doing a lot of debugging, this is going to be a absolutely. That's just like a paper cut that just takes pain away. Oh, totally. This is this is fantastic. Totally. Yeah. Okay. And so and we can reset those on the fly and and then everything's back to how we would expect it to be. Okay, so you may not look like Steve Jobs, but when you say one more thing, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got your number now. Um, right. Okay, that's really cool. All right, well, uh, thank you for doing that. Thank yeah. you for being our first person to do a tech short in the flesh. Absolutely. Uh, and it's actually been really cool being in Seattle this week and, and uh, catching up with you. everybody. Um, so if you're watching out there, if there's anything else you want to see us cover on our future tech short, come find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, until next time, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.